Okay, guys, um, here we go. Second half of the story from uh, four months at the bottom of the world, Antarctic Journal. We're on page 383, and it is Christmas Eve, actually, at Palmer Station. It says December 24th, Palmer Station. It was three in the morning, bright outside, and I couldn't sleep. Now, for those of you who don't know, in um, the winter months for us, it's the summer months for the bottom hemisphere, this the bottom half of the world, and Antarctica is at the very, very bottom. So it gets the most hours of sunlight that it's gonna get all year during um, during the time when we have the darkest parts of our year. So um, it's bright there because it's summer and that's when it gets the most sunshine. I crept downstairs, signed out, and took the flagged trail up the glacier. Um, when people come and go at Palmer Station, they have to sign in and out so that people know who is in the base and who is not. So if somebody goes out and they don't come back right away, um, people would know that they aren't at the base and they might need to go looking for them. Dressed in a watchman's cap, three layers under my parka and boots, I climbed in a I climbed in a stillness broken only by the noise of snow crunching under my soles. Okay, she's dressed in three layers. Um, so even in summer, it's still really cold, right? Greenish purple clouds covered the sky from edge to edge. The sea was the color of pewter. Pewter is like a, a steely gray kind of color. Near the top, I heard a cracking sound, a slap magnified a million times in my ear. Another followed, then another. Echoes of sound, aftershocks, sizzled in the air. The sky began to glow with an eerie luminescence, as if someone in the heavens had switched on a neon light in place of the sun. I felt myself dropping straight down. A crack had appeared under me, a crevice in a glacier. A crevice would be like a big gap, okay, some huge opening. I'm alive because the crack was narrow. I fell to my shoulders, my boot soles too wide to fit through the bottom of the crack. I stared below into a blue-green hole cut with facets like a diamond. Okay, the things that, like facets are like faces of a diamond, so that would make it kind of sparkle and shine, okay? After a few deep breaths, I began to scramble out. So in case you didn't get it, she's fallen into a crack, okay? <laughs> Talk about scary, right? Terrified the crack would keep growing, I moved slowly. It was an hour before I was on firm ice. It took her an hour to climb out very, very carefully. The color of the sky shifted to blue-gray with streaks of yellow along the western horizon. To my horror, I saw a pattern of cracks zigzagging like fractured window glass. Fractured would be like cracked. You could see the cracks in it, but it's not like actually broken into pieces across the glacier surface. I checked my watch. I'd been gone three hours. I don't know why, but I didn't want anyone rescuing me. I decided to crawl down the glacier on hands and knees. I felt my way inch by inch, rubbing the surface of the snow with my palms before making a move. So she's like crawling along, checking to make sure that there's not a crack there that she's gonna fall through again. I have a new weariness tonight, born of having been frightened out of my wits while watching one of the most beautiful skies I'll ever see. This is a very interesting passage and it's a great example of firsthand account and somebody's experience, something that um, when we talk about secondhand accounts tomorrow, um, we'll see that it's very, very different. You're getting everything from her perspective. So you're seeing things and hearing things. She describes sounds and she describes what she sees in terms of colors and she compares it to other um, things that you would see so that you know what it would look like in your mind. Okay, this is unique to a firsthand account. You you get somebody's feelings, you get um, sensory details, things that they saw, heard, um, tasted possibly, like when she talked about the krill yesterday, things like that. Um, we even know how cold she is because she talked about how many layers of clothing she's wearing, okay? All of that is unique to a firsthand account, all right? Okay, on page 385, January 6th, Palmer Station. So she's back at the base. Okay, take a look at that picture at the top of the page because they're gonna talk about this in the, um, in the passage, okay? It says, earlier today, my friend Carl, the ocean scientist, came to my room and said, let's go see the green flash. The what, I asked? Come on, you'll see, hurry or we'll miss it. 
We headed up the glacier and at the top, we sat facing west. The sun slipped slowly toward the horizon. As it fell, its orb glowed a deep orange. The shape of it was, was fat like a squashed pumpkin. Near the end of the drop, the light on the top of the orb flashed green, the green flash. There it is, I said, I saw it. The green flash is a rare fleeting event. Fleeting means it happens really, really quickly. Fleeting event in the Earth's atmosphere. To catch it with the naked eye, there must be a clear horizon at sunset as often seen over water. The green flash comes with certain conditions in the sky having to do with the way light bends. It lasts less than a 20th of a second. You can't even count that fast, right? So this is something, would you be able to experience it anywhere? No, this is something that would be unique to um, only certain parts of the world at certain times of day. So she's feeling pretty special, I think, just as any of us would to be able to experience something so unique. Okay, this is the last journal entry. It says March 12th, winging home, winging home. What does that mean? Think about it as we um, read, okay? Um, I also want you to notice the picture at the top of the page. That is a photograph of a penguin egg says, before leaving, I collected, with permission, a sterile penguin egg that would never hatch. Sterile means that it's not going to be a baby penguin. So there, she wasn't like killing a baby penguin when she took this, okay? I made room for it in my suitcase by giving a lot of my clothes away. The airline lost my bag in Miami. I told the airline people that I had to have it back, pleading, begging. It has a penguin egg in it, I said. They glanced at each other and eyed me funny. They probably thought she was crazy. Who carries a penguin egg in their suitcase, right? Fortunately for me and them, they found the egg. Or, I'm sorry, the bag. The egg reminds me of my trip to the place where penguins raise downy chicks. Downy are like really soft, feathery. Krill swarm in numbers greater than stars in the sky. Whales have rights and icebergs drift in graceful arcs across southern ocean swells. At home, I'll look out at the desert landscape and remember the Antarctic desert, the last great wilderness on earth. Um, I don't know if you know this, when she called it a desert, uh, I can't remember if we talked about this or not, all my years kind of run together. Um, a desert does not necessarily mean hot. A uh, desert landscape is any landscape or any um, area that gets less than a certain amount of precipitation or rainfall a year. And so Antarctica and even parts of, um, I believe even parts of Canada are qualified as deserts because the precipitation that they get does not reach that point um, or it, it's less than a certain point and that's what qualifies it as a desert. So Antarctica, even though it's freezing cold and we think of deserts as really hot and dry and sandy, um, that's not necessarily true of a desert. It has to do with rainfall. So Antarctica is a desert, okay? Winging home, she's talking about her flight home and the uh, interesting thing that happened there, losing her uh, suitcase and then um, getting it back, okay? So today you are going to finish up this, the Antarctic Journal map. You have three more boxes or you should have three more boxes to do with the three events that we read today. I don't want you just copying the pictures from the book. You're coming up with your own pictures. You also remember have to write a sentence. You need a vocabulary word in each box and you need to have the events labeled um, just as they are in the journal and the story by the date and the location of um, that event in the story, okay? If you have questions, you can contact me on Zoom or by an inbox message, okay? Good job, work hard. Uh, don't forget, at the end of today, you have to take a picture of your completed story map. All six pictures need to be in that um, that picture, and then you upload it to Canvas under Antarctic Journal Assignment. However, this paper, you need to put it in your folder and bring it back. I want them on Monday. I want to be able to display them um, on the bulletin board, okay? So once you take the picture, tuck it nicely in your folder so that it's ready to come back to school. All right, I'll see you soon.